everybody, welcome back to Recordology. This is gonna be fun. Today we are looking at a Sony automatic turntable and I love automatic turntables. This one I got an amazing, amazing deal on. It was listed for like 15 bucks. Turns out it was half off day. So I got this thing for like seven, eight bucks and it's rough. It's definitely rough. I need some help. So we're gonna see if we can get it up and going. And then I've got kind of a surprise side-by-side -side that I wanna show you a little bit further on in the video. You're not going to want to miss this. This is a Sony PS-LX250H from 2001. And this show, by the way, is dedicated to all of those on my channel and on YouTube in general that no matter how good, how well-performing, how cool, how interesting, how fun, how neat, how joyous any new turntable is. They say, you know what? No, it doesn't matter. Nothing new is good. The only thing good for turntables are vintage. And this, yes, this is vintage. Even if it's, you know, 21 year old vintage, it's still vintage. And it came from a thrift store or a charity shop for my friends in the UK. I paid $8 for this. It was listed at 16 and I paid eight because it was half off day and I was thankful for that. I am showing it to you in all of its disgusting glory. This is not a beautiful looking thing at this point, unless you think of it as possibilities and opportunity. But let us have an initial look see, shall we? We've got dust, we've got brown things, we've got schmutz, we've got scratches. It's a, it's a mess. This thing is an absolute disaster. It's, it's filthy, it's disgusting. And I wanted to show it to you in all of its unclean glory. However, not a sponsor. Clorox to the rescue. I'm gonna give it the wipe down. I just wanted to show you kind of what we had out of the gate. Let's look under the hood. Under the hood, we have problems right off the bat. Um, let me zoom in a little bit here. You can see that if your uh, skin is crawling, this is probably the first reason why, but don't, don't let it crawl too much because there's no stylus on there it's just a cartridge this is kind of springy right now because it's somewhere in the middle of its auto return cycle this uh, platter mat is ripped off and pulled off to the side <laughs> it's it's rough it's rough i mean it's but it's not a problem i think barring any unforeseen circumstances we could probably resurrect this into a working machine which we will endeavor to do so i just wanted to start by that initial initial look this is a fully automatic single disc record player. If it looks familiar, we have um, reviewed its descendant and we'll look at that one in, the, in a minute. In, in fact, instead of focusing on direct feed sound test, we are gonna do a sound test on this full function test. We're gonna take it apart a little bit initially, but I want to do a side-by-side -side tear down between this and its descendant. I think it's the 300, LX300, if I remember correctly, I'll verify that in a minute. And we'll look at it side-by-side -side and we'll see what changed in 20 years, because this is 2001, the other one's 2017. So before I do that though, I'm going to give it a thorough clean off camera and we'll go from there. Okay, I said I would do that off camera and I intended to, but I was really impressed. Just one wipe down with the Clorox wipes and I feel like we've completely resurrected this lid. The other one, even after it was clean, still had quite a few scratches and it doesn't look that good, but this one looks half decent. As you can tell, we got a lot of gunk off of it. There are scratches, it's not perfect, but it's revealed, you know, a much better condition dust cover than I thought we had. All right, I'm going to keep cleaning. Okay, I gave it a fairly cursory, but at the same time, fairly thorough cleaning. And as you can see, as it's drying, it, it looks weird. It's, they make these dust covers to this day, just dust covers in general are like susceptible to all sorts of stuff. And it's probably not the best thing to be putting chemicals on it to clean it. Clorox wipes don't have bleach, so um, I always get caught. Don't put bleach on there doesn't have bleach it's just Clorox brand non-bleach cleaner uh, but it's disinfectant cleaner and that's a good thing to do when you're getting stuff from the thrift store especially these days now this automatic turntable the LX 250 H uh, it has the similar and familiar controls that we see on a lot of automatic controls you've got the speed select is two speed the start button the stop button and the up and down queuing button stereo full automatic turntable system I want you to keep in the back of your mind the fact that we got this for eight bucks. So you got eight bucks and just a hankering for getting into vinyl. You can go to your thrift store on the right day and spend 10 bucks and come away with an entire system 
and a, a couple of records even. Although now, if you go to Goodwill, this isn't Goodwill, but if you go to Goodwill, they're charging $2.99 for used records now, which can be a little ridiculous sometimes because the records aren't any better. They're still dollar records, but at a you know premium, more premium price is kind of annoying. That being said, it's a lot cheaper than getting into you know brand new vinyl only, 30, 40 and up. But if you're not selective, you can have fun just getting into it. You know what I mean? 10 bucks, 20 bucks, you could come away with a lot of stuff. Now, the one thing you don't get with this turntable are speakers. This is not a complete setup. So you need a uh, stereo with an aux input. You need a uh, stereo with a phono input. I'll explain why in a minute. This does not have built-in speakers. And I don't want you to think it does just because of the fact that I'm not showing them. So let me go ahead and get this uh, dust cover off and we'll check out the rest of its features, capability sets. Okay, so this is the size selector if you want to pick either 17 centimeters or 30, which translates to 7 inches or 12 inches, two speed sizes. However, like I always say, if you want a manual capability on your turntable, automatics can do that. You can queue up just like a manual, just have the added capability of push button ignition, as it were, to play your records, which is awesome. This would be where the 45 adapter goes. This is a common Sony thing to put it up front here, which makes sense, I like it. This one's long gone. Back here, we've got the how to replace your stylus instruction label, which will come in handy actually in a minute. And everything's automatic. So the, cue, the, uh, to or the, uh, the counterbalance is preset. It's got a cueing shelf in there, et cetera, et cetera. You can't manually cue it with a lever. You have to either cue it with the finger lift or use the full automatic capability set. That's pretty much all there is to it. Let's look at that cartridge. Like a lot of automatics, this has the Audio-Technica 3600L cartridge. And if it looks weird, that's because there's no stylus on here. However, I got a couple knocking around the house we can use to replace that and uh, get this thing going again. This is not a, st a cartridge that you can just replace and upgrade. This is permanently mounted. So if you want the ability to upgrade your cartridge, this isn't the turntable for you. But if you're just getting started, a 3600L is a lot of cartridge for cheap. And the stylus replacements are pretty affordable too. If you order the stylus replacement online, it's like 10, 15 bucks. If you want it right now, you can go to your local Walmart, 25 bucks. If you don't mind paying a little extra for the convenience of getting it immediately. And it's, it's, it's a great cartridge. It's a great stylus, a great cartridge. It's conical, it's micro groove, it's everything you need. It's everything you need. And you honestly aren't gonna notice a difference from a higher end cartridge until you get up in the two to $300 range in my experience. So this is gonna cover the use case and needs of most people that they'll ever need. Okay, so the uh, mat here is torn. So it was kind of like that before, but I, it works. Unless I just, you know, if that drives you crazy and then you can you can upgrade that it looks like this is a standard full-size platter so you can upgrade that but again for a beginner somebody just doesn't care eh, it's okay next big question is is the belt shot or is it in place this is a belt driven turntable and the motor is back there and there is no rubber sharing space with that pulley so the belt either fell off or it's destroyed and again if you need a new belt it's not that expensive but let's see a lot of times the belt will just fall off or they'll break the needle and then they'll be like, eh, it's ruined and throw the whole thing away. And then you've got, you know, five, 10, $15 investment to get this thing working again. There's no belt whatsoever. Okay, no big deal. I've got an extra because I've got the other Sony. So we'll, we'll borrow the other Sony. This looks to be a die cast aluminum in all likelihood. This is a good rigid platter. You can see strobe markings down here. The Sony doesn't use any sort of strobe marking or measurement but that's okay and just like the other sony we got these weird holes in here <laughs> so you guys give me some advice or you give me some tips on the last video about what that could possibly be this is the mechanism the auto return mechanism that we see on the today's audio technicas on the old iwas from the 90s and on these sony's these are chinese made these are not japanese turntables at this point we do have a voltage selector switch cutout but it doesn't look like there's anything in there. And we've got it. Oh, look, oh yeah, I forgot about this. I was going to say this doesn't have a preamp, but then I remember they put the preamp switch under the platter. 
which is ridiculous, but yeah, so it does have a preamp. Okay, that's good. I'm glad for that. And that's about it. I mean, we need a belt. That's the biggest thing. So I'm going to get a belt on here. I'm going to put a stylus on here. And we're going to be able to go to town, give it a test. This will use the same kind of JYK motor that you see in suitcase players, all-in-ones, et cetera, et cetera. It's fine. It's a DC motor. There may or may not be like basic DC servo speed control in this. It is speed adjustable. In fact, let's look at the bottom. If you look on the bottom side, there uh, is a place where you can stick a tweaker tool in there, a very small one, like eyeglass small. Not, not, not just a small screwdriver. You need an actual, I always say this, you need an actual tweaker tool, like eyeglass repair tool, that small. Otherwise, you can short out the motor on the, in, on the motor casing, which basically speeds up the motor, and you can't tell what speed you're setting it at. We've also got adjustments here for setting the drop, the return, the reject point on the automatic functionality. If, if it's dropping the needle too far in on the record or not far in enough, or if it doesn't let you play to the end of the record, you need to adjust the return, the reject point. That's where you would come in here and make those adjustments. This foot back here is cracked up a little bit. Shouldn't impact anything, but kind of interesting to note. The front two feet have this plastic cup, so that it gives it kind of a wider stance from the front. Just a visual thing. The actual functional foot is the same size as the rear ones. Okay, got pulled into a couple other things there, so. We've lost our lighting, but that's okay. We're taking this project into the evening, which is totally fun and totally fine by me. So I've got an IFI headphone amplifier here, and I'm using this simply to get this from RCA to, to mini so that I can use my little speaker here. And again, this is not a you know high fidelity sound test. I just want to demonstrate that we've got sound, et cetera, et cetera. I'm more concerned, not concerned, I'm more interested tonight in the functionality. So that's what we're gonna focus on. I've got a belt on there now. I've got a uh, stylus on there now. I've got a 45 adapter. For a test record tonight, we're gonna be featuring Top Shelf by Laura Ainsworth. This is a viewer and his wife, I guess they're both viewers, of the station graciously sent us this autographed copy of her album, which is really cool. So I'm proud to feature it yet again on the on the show. It's been a while since we have done so, but if you like big band vocalist, Americana, American songbook music, then this is right up your alley. In fact, I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below if you want to snag a copy. And again, thank you for sending us a copy of the record. Autographed at that, very, very proud to have that. Okay, so I've got the 3600 on there. I've got the stylus. I've got the belt. We should be good to go, although I did forget one thing. And this is some feedback that I got from one of you guys. They said, whenever you do this, whenever you turn on an automatic turntable, and I've always said this before, almost always, like nine times out of 10, you plug it in, it'll be in the middle of a cycle that you don't want it to be. So if you just rotate this a certain number of times, you can send the tone arm back to the home position. So I'm gonna do that as suggested. Put the mat back on, put the record back on. I'm gonna plug it in now. And the reason why I didn't plug it in before is because there's no on and off switch on these. Once you plug it in, it's gonna finish the cycle if it's in the middle of one. So let's see where it is. Hopefully we got it back to start. Okay, looks like we did good there. And we should be good to go, I hope. I'm gonna turn my little speaker up here, control our volume here. We've got it set to large size record, and I'm gonna hit start. And I'm gonna hit start. And nothing's happening. Okay, take two. I just unplugged it and put it into another outlet. This particular outlet, sometimes I have a breaker issue with it, so I put it on a different outlet and start. And stop. And cue. Okay. And manually cue. Start and manually cue. <sighs> Please tell me this thing isn't dead. Is it just the belt? Okay, now it's going. Why is it going now? Cue that up so it doesn't drop on the rubber. 
Hmm, 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 hmm. Yeah, the belt may be a little loose. I'll send it home. Okay. Why don't you like to play with a record on? So we're gonna stop the turntable. Oops, never do what I just did, children, never do. Okay, let's try this again. Third time's a charm. Start. Why does it not like that? But to hold it? I shouldn't have to hold it. This thing actually might just be broken. It's just rare. I mean, usually they don't just, you know, not work, right? I'm keeping $8 in the back of my head. Eight bucks, only spend eight bucks on it. What on earth? Now I'm just pushing random buttons for no reason. Okay, I take the record off. I'm going to take the platter mat off. Okay, now it wants to spin. Why is it spinning now? I've got the queuing, I got the key switch up, so it's not gonna drop it. Okay, and then I'm done playing the record. I hit stop. And it should send it home. And it does, and it would drop, but again, I've got the queuing lever up. I hit start. And it doesn't. What is what is triggering it to start? What is triggering it to start? Hmm. This is very, very curious. That's weird. I give it a little kickstart and it did start. Now, will it reject if I put it into the reject position? Gets to the end of the record, yeah. Will it shut off the platter? Hmm. This is the risk, you guys, when you buy a used turntable. All right, now I'm really fascinated. What is or isn't happening when I hit the start switch? And I can't take this off just to observe because part of the functionality is the cog on the bottom of the platter. There's actually a, a, a cog that initiates the positioning for this whole mechanism. So you have to have this on. But if I hit start, let's see, is that motor spinning? I think the belt might be loose. I think the belt is loose, so it slips on the platter. And because the, the platter drives the tone arm, the rest of it doesn't get going until I give it a little bit of a, of a spin. So I think, that the problem here is a slippy old dry belt. This is the belt off of the other Sony. And I think that's the issue. This is actually the belt, and I probably stretched it because this is the belt that I borrowed to put on the Technics before I got the proper belt for it. So I'm, I'm now, now that I think through it, I'm confident that's what the issue is. Okay, now that we've solved that mystery, I'm gonna hit start and that's all warmed up. Now it's gonna work. So we should be able to actually hear some music now, which I'm excited to do. So here we go. heavy tread of the heavy feet sounds good that belong to a lonesome car and so if we want to cue the different song up we can hit the cueing button and you know when i said earlier that there was no cueing lever well you don't need it because you got the cueing switch on the front so that was that was dumb on my part descend. that descend is pretty quick look at that it just falls pretty heavy so again not unheard of for these automatics. I did a video a couple of months ago on adding damping fluid to the little piston shaft that's underneath this uh, lift shelf here. It's very easy, very quick, fairly affordable thing to do. Interesting the color of this vinyl compared to the black plastic of the uh, record player and all the annoying little dust flecks from my uh, cleaning cloth. It needs, a, it needs another once over lightly, or maybe not so lightly, and yeah. Then some time later desire If a man says he don't He's not a man, he's a liar So don't let yourself And we've already demonstrated the run out, but let's do it again. I like these uh, 3600 cartridge or uh, styli that have a little plastic protector that swings up and out of the way. Okay, 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 let's not do that. Oh my gosh. Laura, don't be pissed that I did that to your record. I don't know why it did that. 
Oh, that was not good. Okay. So it did not lift it high enough on the reject. Why did it do that? That was not good. Okay, I don't want a chance scratching this record. Somehow it didn't scratch, at least not visually. So that was scary. I'm not sure why it did that, but apparently it didn't lift it high enough on the return. All right, we can put on a junk record now. This one, I don't care if it gets scratched so we can play around with it. This is just a, you know, test record. It's Duke Ellington. It's a great record. It just happens to be this copy is, is already having issues. Okay, 45 RPM. And no, we didn't check the speed on this unit, but if it's off, you just adjust it with that tweaker tool underneath. Man, it does not lift high. Did you see that, guys? It just shot that, that tone arm across really low. See, if you manually cue it, it goes up pretty high. But watch on the auto return. Oh, okay. So that's interesting. And that, that's something that needs adjustment. I don't want to do That just makes me die inside. Every time a record makes that sound, we don't like that here. Nobody likes that here. But yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, it, it's, it needs a little bit of adjustment. I'm not sure if how you... I've never had to adjust the tone arm lift height before, but I'm assuming that's either one of the pots underneath or possibly one you can adjust right there. There is a little... There's a little screw right there. So maybe that's something you can adjust. It's just weird that mechanically it cues up nice and high, but well, I guess it's all mechanically, but on the automatic function, it barely lifts it high enough. It doesn't lift it high enough to get it across the record. So anyway, all right, let's look at this and the other Sony side by side. Now. Okay, so on the left, we have the PS LX250H. Not sure what the H stands for, and on the right, we have the PS LX 300 USB. We did a full video on this guy eh, about three, four months ago, if you want to see that. Cosmetically, a little bit cleaner. Dust covers on both are ugly, and, and just even after that one dried, it just wasn't as good. It's just The dust co covers on these don't look that great. From a design aesthetic standpoint, these look identical to me. I can't find any design. Now, keep in, or design difference. Keep in mind, this is 2001. We say 2001, I think 2001, this is 2017. And apparently the OEM they were buying these from, because they're not made by Sony, I mean, they're Chinese, um, is the same model, except for the fact this one has a USB jack on the back. It's, it looks identical. It's got the same preamp switch under the platter, which is weird. It's got the same platter mat. It's got the same mechanism. The buttons are the same. The branding is the same, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm not sure exactly what the difference is. I thought just for grins, we would take them apart and see if they look any different on the inside. So sit back and relax as I cut instantly to that. And I'm going to take care of that off camera for you right now. Let's see. Let's see if there's any difference on the inside. Okay, this was actually a little easier than I thought. It took maybe five minutes. All the screws on the bottom come out except for the two front feet. I'm being very careful to keep all the screws in place and not have them spill out like I always do. The only difference I can see between these two units is this piece on this one is there's no holes. And as you can see, upper left-hand corner, that one does. I don't know if that makes any difference. From a feature standpoint, these are identical, except this one has USB. So I'm gonna start by taking off this lid or this bottom cover. And then we will take off this one. And let's compare the two. Okay, I've got the shot so high up I can't even see the screen, but it's it's a little different. There there are some differences as you can see here. So this again is the 2017, the uh, 300 whatever it is model. This is the 250H from 2001, and there are some subtle differences. And I'm not even gonna pretend to know exactly what the implication is. There's a little bit more uh, uh, RF shielding on this guy right here, whereas this circuit board is completely exposed. And I can tell by looking at the edge here that the circuit board is a different one. It's a bigger one on this unit, possibly to include that USB circuitry. Also, this board is different. There is a series of resistors next to this capacitor. Actually, this might be very similar, but reversed. It looks like the capacitor and resistors are on the top side there and on the bottom side there. We've also got this board here that's not present there. I'm trying to see what else. The wiring is, is done a little bit differently, but pretty much the same idea. We've got the push rods for the buttons on the front. 
I've got these flipped around here. This is the uh, 2017 model, the 300. And let's see, what kind of motor do we have? This one has a Sanko motor on it, and the other one has a Matsushita motor on it, so a Panasonic motor on it. Man, this is really interesting. Let's scoot over to the other unit, as you can see, a different motor. And a lot more simplistic circuitry here. I mean, they both are going to have a preamp, but this one does not have the USB. A lot of the armature is identical, at least to the naked eye but there are subtle differences. There's another look at that Sanko motor. And while we're over here, some of the other accoutrements, those push rods. And going over here, we've got a Matsushita motor. Very interesting. So they started off with the Panasonic OEM motor and then went for the Sanko motor. Contact switches, as you can see right there, look the same, with a little cobweb there. Look the same on that one as they do over here. Pretty interesting though. Pretty darn interesting. <laughs> and the lesson learned here is it's a risk. Both of these were thrift store finds. I forget what I paid for the 300. It was about, I think I paid like 20 maybe for the, for the 300. And like I said, $8 for the 250. But it's got, you know, there's an asterisk next to that because it's, it needs some adjustment. So I think it could be adjusted. I don't think it's beyond repair in it by any means, but it's a risk you take. It's a risk you take. And there's nobody to call at this point. There's no maintenance or service or warranty on any of these. You could pay to have somebody do it, somebody that knows way more than me. I've had people ask me before about repairing stuff. I'm like, you're barking up the wrong tree, my friend. Flattering, but I am definitely barely qualified to open the lid on these. But it's fun and it's interesting. All right, my friends, and that is going to do it for today. Now, Sony is still making turntables or selling them, I should say. There's a difference there, but they are selling them. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below to the latest and greatest. If you want, you know, exactly what we looked at today, just gotta keep your eyes peeled. They're out there. They're definitely still out there. And as you can see, it's not half bad, but that's gonna do it for now, guys. Happy record hunting, and we'll see you next time.